morning. Welcome. Uh, glad you're out on, on such a day. And uh, even though it was predicted to be much worse, and as I learned in Montana, uh, in, the middle of, in the middle of January, when it's 20 degrees warmer than what they predicted, it's really reason to give thanks. You know, because uh, 20 degrees warmer in the middle of January is, is usually a very good thing. Uh, just a couple of announcements this morning uh, before we before we begin worship. Um, just we will not be having uh, we've postponed because of the weather and and all that was predicted. We've postponed the uh, the uh, special service on recovery centered recovery centered worship. Have uh, postponed that until March thirty first, um, and so uh, we will won't be having that this morning. Um, do want to uh, let you know that there is a recovery uh, focused, recovery centered worship service that's going to be at um, Trinity Cathedral downtown uh, on the Episcopal Church uh, on um, Wednesday, January 30th. And I'm hoping that if the book uh, class uh, that we're doing right now that's uh, studying uh, recovery, a recovery minded church is the name of the book. Um, hoping that we can go to that, um, going, going to the, we'll be going to that service. Uh, otherwise, just a reminder, the other thing is uh, just a reminder that, um, that we have a uh, annual meeting next Sunday uh, between services at 9.30. So uh, please come, uh, come prepared uh, for that. Uh, there are, um, and there will be additional uh, annual reports available uh, for, for that service in case you forget yours. Um, also, just a reminder of, of the ongoing uh, serial battle uh, out there. And the, it's hard to miss it in the entryway. So uh, just a reminder of that. Those are the announcements I have this morning. I um, would ask you to please rise as you're able as we begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sins. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are a captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouth, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and that you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 62. 
For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We feast upon the abundance of your house, O Lord. We feast upon the abundance of your house, O Lord. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You have you save humankind and animals, O Lord. We feast upon the abundance of your house, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. All people take refuge under the shadow of your wing. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who, lo who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. We feast upon the abundance of your house, O Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom. And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you or, and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six jars, six stone jars, for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, through the, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And then the inferior wine, inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of the signs of in, Gal- in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. God's grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. The comment was made this week at our Bible study that how much people enjoy this, this text, uh, this story from John, uh, because it's, it's such a human story. It really reflects um, our whole humanity, which is, which is not always the case, and, and consequently, it's not one of... I have to tell you, it's not one of the favorite stories for preachers to preach on, but um, here goes my attempt. But anyway, when I, when I thought of that, and as I thought about this text, about this story, this story during the week, I started reflecting on my own story about how it is that people see in you gifts and timing and, and, and things happening in you that you don't see in yourself. You know, I can see that in all the way through my life from the time with my, with my mom and dad to with, with Ronnie with other people in my life who either said to me, no, you need to think about doing this, or you're ready to do this, to those who said, no, you're not ready to do this. This isn't for you. One example for me that was really led into the ministry that I did for for nearly 27 years in the church was said to me by um, Pastor Carl Schatauer, who was the assistant to Bishop Jessen. Uh, He, after I lost my position, after my position was eliminated at Epley, um, I went to see Carl about what opportunities were available in the church, and he asked me if I had ever thought about being an interim pastor. I didn't even know what an interim pastor was. 
and that there was such a thing in the church. You know, but he worked with me, talked to me about it, eventually offered training, said that there was an opportunity for training to become an intentional interim pastor. He said, I think, you know, I think you have the gifts for that and you would be good at that and the church really needs that right now. We really need some people who, who are trained and who are good at this, at this ministry. So I took the training, I went on, and as I said, it led to the major time of my ministry in the church. I thought of that in my own life because I'm thinking this story does much the same for Jesus. That somehow his mother, somehow Mary saw in Jesus she knew Jesus had the power to deal with this. I don't know if she realized he was going to turn water into wine. I don't, you know, I don't know. She just trusted that somehow Jesus would make this right. He had the power to do that. Somehow that, that made sense to her. And so when she says to Jesus, you know, they have no wine, and Jesus responds by saying, what, what is that to me or to you? What reason do I have to be concerned about that? Well, the reason was that, you know, it, it had to do with family honor, um, or, or we think that, because probably the only reason that Jesus and Mary were invited to this wedding is that somehow they were related to the bridegroom. And it was the bridegroom's responsibility in ancient Israel to, in the Israel of Jesus' day, it was the bridegroom's responsibility to provide the food and the wine for a week-long celebration. I mean, marriage wasn't just a one-day affair. Uh, it was a week-long celebration for the entire village and the entire family. And so for the wine to give out, in the middle of the celebration was a huge blemish on the honor of the whole family. Um, so when Mary comes to, him, to Jesus and says, we have no more wine, they've, they've run out of wine. She is saying to him, you know, consider Consider the honor due to all your people in a real way. And so Jesus hears the voice of his mother. His mother who had heard the voice of God, the spirit speaking to her, telling her how special this son would be. He trusted her insight. He trusted her judgment. And even though he felt it wasn't time for him to act, he acted on the basis of her judgment, of what she said. And that's, as I reflected on the humanity of this story, that's what came to me as, you know, shows Jesus this if we really look at this this story it doesn't show the power I mean we get so caught up in turning water into wine and I said something about preaching on this text and one of my friends said yeah if you can show them people how to do that you know Morningstar will be the they, you'll be shutting, having to shut the doors on Sunday morning because, you know, they, if they can come and see you turn water into wine every, every Sunday. But that isn't, you know, that tends to get the focus of this story and we lose sight of this decision of Jesus to listen to his mother, to hear what his mother is saying and to change his mind. Jesus changes his mind. And 
allows for the celebration to continue. Allows for that celebration to continue. The joy of celebrating this couple's wedding is allowed to continue. Because Jesus listens to his mother. So, and all you mothers out there know how, how miraculous that is when your when child truly listens to you. Yeah. The importance of that, though, is that in changing his mind, the joy of that celebration continues. And that, you know, the 12th verse of the second chapter, which is left off, says that, you know, Jesus and Mary and, and the disciples went to Capernaum to take a week to recover from the joy of that celebration. So, you know, it was something special. It is. When we listen to the voice, that voice of God, the voice of the Spirit, wherever we see it, wherever we can hear it, whether it's coming through our mother or our brothers or a colleague who knows us well and sees in us gifts that we can't see in ourselves. Gifts of the Spirit that we don't see in ourselves. Strengths that we don't see in ourselves. And wonders why we aren't, you know, why we aren't acting on those strengths. Why we aren't acting on those gifts. We need to listen to that. And when we do, the miracle of God's spirit being at work in the world to bring joy. To bring joy into the lives of God's people. Wherever they may be is fulfilled. So, listen. With your ears, with your heart. When people talk tell you of, of the strengths they see in you, of the gifts that they see you have. You may be being called to bring joy, to bring joy to God's creation and to God's people. Amen.
Let us join in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. We pray for the church. Pour out your spirit upon us and enliven us for mission. Draw us together in love that we may be one Lord, that we may be one. Lord, lead us in the way of your beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth, sustain oceans and seas, rivers and lakes, marshes and wetlands. Watch over dormant plants and hibernating animals as they rest in your care. Renew your creation and protect all creatures from harm. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, inspire leaders to work for the common good. Grant courage to those who put themselves at risk to protect others. Turn us away from violence and teach us Teach us to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, protect children and vulnerable adults who depend on others to provide for their daily care. Uphold those who struggle with depression. And I would add addiction. Console the grieving. Heal the sick, especially Carol and her family, Kent and Bill, Marilyn and Jan, and those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, bless the newly baptized, Renew your children in the covenant of their baptism. Empower us by your loving spirit to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, remember those who have died, especially Jan Gradup and Daryl Jordan. Hold us safe in your arms of mercy and bring us with them into your promise of life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us join in sharing the gift of our Lord's peace.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through, your Son, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. In the miracle, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's feast of abundant life is prepared for us. Come, let us eat.
this means go with you today and always. We thank you, O oh God, that you have fed us at your banquet table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory, revealed in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. You want to get the that's okay you can no go ahead we just go ahead and let him yeah made manifest manifest at Jordan stream prophet, priest and king supreme and at wedding
in peace. Share the, share the joy of Christ. Great. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. It's like you're speaking right in my ear. <laughs>